This is the first video I've ever made for YouTube. In fact, it may be the first video I've ever made at all. There are a lot of content providers out there doing videos on knives. And I never really felt like I had much to add that wasn't being covered already. But uh, one day I realized that, that perhaps I do. And so this video is actually going to be about one particular knife, and that is the Santos by Joe Louis. Uh, Joe Louis Knives, which is a, a company that is um, owned and, and spearheaded by Joey Cordova and his wife. I've never met Joey Cordova. I'm on friendly enough terms with him because I have purchased a couple knives directly from him. But it would be a stretch to say that we're friends. Uh, Joey Cordova did not ask me to make this video. I'd like to first talk about the Santos. And then after that, I'd like to talk a little bit more about some of the other Joe Louis offerings. And then I'd like to finish by talking about a, a mid-tech that is about to be released uh, by Joe Louis Knives. I would like to tell you how I got my first Santos knife. Bark River Knives did a collaboration with Joey Cordova to create three knives, the Santos, the Ranch Hand, and the Essos. And they were released uh, as a collaborative project. So you have the Bark River logo on one side. They were made out of A2 steel, which is Bark River's sort of standby steel. Uh, they had the Joe Louis logo on the other side. I didn't really take note or pay attention until I saw this wood. This is Curly Coa Burl, and I really wanted this, this wood. And I remember thinking, it's a shame that, that, that those scales are on a knife that I really have no interest in. So the irony, of course, is this has become my all-time favorite uh, knife for, for general EDC purpose. The, eventually the Santos knives went on, on clearance, and so I was all the more tempted, but I still was uh, put off by what I considered to be, a, at that time, a boring uh, design. Uh, now I no longer call it boring, what I call it is understated. Uh, and I think that that is actually one of its um, bigger selling points to me now, and, and if people can wrap their minds around it, it may be for them as well. So I was unsure about the knife, and I asked a couple people in one of the online forums their opinion of the knife. They told me it was amazing, actually. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger and got it, basically because of the wood. It wasn't love at first sight, but it was not too far off. When I held this knife in my hand, I realized it was really special, and I couldn't see that from the pictures. Well, I already mentioned how its understated design was a bit of a turnoff to me, but the other thing that seemed a bit of a turnoff to me was this handle. I have maybe medium approaching large hands. I wear large gloves for outdoor gloves. And this seemed really wide to me. And I don't really like knives that are especially wide. I like knives that are a little bit thinner in girth. Uh, so I wasn't sure that this was gonna be my knife. One person in particular I spoke to suggested that I wouldn't have a problem with how thick it was, but also suggested that it wasn't exactly thin either. After having the knife, I, I see what he's getting at. It, it's not a thin knife in, in the handle, but for someone who likes a little bit thinner grip, I have no problem with this at all. And this is what I think is uh, one of the brilliant parts about Joey Cordova's design, is that this handle, I think, while maybe not as flashy and sexy as some of the other knives that we've seen recently that, that sell so well, this handle, I believe, will work really well for a wide variety of hands. Let's talk about the blade real fast. Right out of the box, your, your thumb just wants to sit right on that spine. The curve, the curve in this knife is just a delight, visually but also ergonomically. When you grab this knife, your, your thumb just wants, to, just wants to sit here, and I've never had a knife that invites this so much. Um, obviously, it's a drop point design. Um, the knife clearly has some belly, although 
I wouldn't call this a dedicated Skinner. It's not so much belly as to as to categorize it that way. It, it has a nice drop and it's got some nice nice belly, and you can kind of see that in in the in the design of the blade. It's a very very useful design for an all round knife. If you'll notice, the blade could have come more directly. Out, out straighter in line with the handle, right? We see that with other, other kinds of designs, but instead the entire blade on the Santos is angled, angled down a little bit, right? If we if we compare it to this ultralight bushcrafter, the whole thing's canted down just a little bit. This downward angle of the blade in relation to the handle is one of the knife's best features and it's so understated, you almost miss it. I would almost compare this aspect of the knife to Bark River's Fox River. Uh, I had a Fox River once and I really did not like it. And I, and I don't mean to sound too negative about Bark River, not everyone's gonna like every design. Clearly there are a ton of people who like the Fox River because it's one of their best selling models. I actually, it, it really irritated me. I really just did not like it. And I didn't like it because of that, the downward cant of that knife with relation to the handle. So you would think I wouldn't like the Santos, but for some reason, I just love this knife and I love this aspect of the knife. However, Joey Cordova did this, he did it differently than the Fox River. And it has the effect when you're doing cuts that, that canted blade uh, has the a strange effect that the knife almost seems to be doing 10% of the cutting for you because of the way that the blade sweeps through the material. I love the blade so much and I love the wood so much that I decided I had to have another one. I didn't want to beat this knife into oblivion and have my favorite knife with my favorite scales ever be trashed because I wanted this to, I knew I wanted this to be a user. So I pretty quickly purchased uh, another Santo. I really wanted the antique ivory micarta because uh, word on the street was that, that micarta was not going to be produced anymore. And then I ended up with this lizard skin version um, just because I wanted the, the variety and handle materials. A2 steel is, is pretty great for a cast steel. Uh, it, it definitely, it's a tool steel. It will definitely stain in, in my area of the country. I really have to stay on top of it and, and flitz uh, the blades after I get back from, from being outside. So it might stay pretty shiny out of necessity. Now this handle might seem somewhat pedestrian or straightforward compared to other knives that have, um, that have really, uh, innovative or intricate intricate handles. Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with, with these kinds of handles, but we've seen a lot of, of handles that, that have a lot of visual appeal in terms of being very um, uh, different or innovative. Uh, whereas this one seems a little understated. Now, I am not a uh, knife historian, but I think it's pretty clear that uh, Joey Cordova has been inspired by uh, loveless designs here. This handle design is such that there are really no hot spots, even with long-term use. I think what I'm really trying to say here is that this knife is, the hand, its handle is classic. Uh, the way that the, the butt, the top of the butt here sweeps back, uh, eliminates virtually any hot spots back here. Of course you have, uh, this, uh, this protrusion at the bottom so that it stays firm in your hand. Um, one thing that you don't often, most people don't notice about this knife until they get it in hand is that there's a, what I call a faux guard here. I'm certainly not fortunate enough to own any uh, Bob Loveless knives, but we can see from designs that are directly inspired by Bob Loveless, you can see the similarities here. Now, while this has an actual guard um, that's, a, that's a separate piece, this one is more integral in, in the, the blade stock. Um, some other designs that are clearly 
Bob Loveless inspired, you could see that the handle material swoops down. Not, it would be a stretch to call that a guard, but it swoops down to give you that effect. Here we can see on Joey Cordova's knife, you almost miss it because the scale does not go down. Uh, it, the, the scale terminates here, but the stock continues down. When you grab that in your hand, that faux guard and that protrusion in the back, your, your hand is secure. The Santos has a great sharpening soil. Um, these from Bark River, of course, are convexed. So you'll end up stropping your knife quite a bit and that sharpening soil really helps. It's got a lanyard tube, of course, and it's got a, a Coke bottle shape to the, to the handle. Besides the Santos, Joey Cordova collaborated with Bark River on two other knives, as previously mentioned, the Ranch Hand and the Essos. Now, I don't live on the coast per se, but I certainly live in a marine environment, and much of my uh, adventures and travels take me down the Pacific coast. So in time, what I really wanted was a Santos, whose design I loved so much, in a stainless steel. And that's when I approached Joey Cordova and asked him if he would make me a stainless version of this knife because it didn't look like Bark River was probably going to release this this model in a stainless steel. My The couple experiences that I had were with custom makers whose books were not closed, but they just never responded to me. This never got back to me. I think like everyone else, they're busy with things in life. Um, but it can be frustrating for someone who, like me, who, who perhaps wanted a, a custom knife and, and there's no reliable path to get one. And I think that's why Bark Rivers were so appealing because Bark River cranks out a whole bunch and you get this mid-tech kind of quality. Um, but with Joy Cordova, when I approached him, he was very responsive. Uh, he was very friendly. When I told him what I wanted, he told me how much. He asked for a reasonable deposit uh, and I was in his book and and I didn't ever wonder did he write my name down and I, I've, I've had custom makers where I, I get my name in their book and it you know two three years goes by and you just don't hear anything and um, uh, with Joy Cordova that was not the case it was very clear and direct communication and after some pleasant communications and letting him know what I wanted I ended up with my custom Santos in CPM 154 uh, since I already had three Santos knives and they were all basically the same, I wanted a little something a little different on this one. We ended up with a, a thinner blade stock, so that it would be more of a more of a slicer. Uh, Joy Cordova does something very interesting that I haven't seen a lot of other makers do. I have seen some, but um, he calls this a key lock, and he's actually fitting together two different materials. Uh, this is black G10 and and uh, micarta that he has fitted together and uh, it's 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 pretty remarkable and you may look at that and say well that's cool it's not really my style that's what I thought too at first but um, it really is a, 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 a beautiful thing to behold the fitting is just absolutely perfect and and I'm really proud to, to own this um, uh, you can use, see we used all black hardware, and that was at my request. Um, the micarta here, I, I believe Joey Cordova calls it uh, vintage micarta. You'll see the discoloration here. This is part of the micarta that was exposed to the elements, and here he contoured it down so it disappears. So this is just really a, a beautiful look to this knife. And finally, the fifth and last Santos that I have in my collection is this and I actually I won this in a um, a contest uh, that I, I I paid to enter a contest and I and I ended up winning this knife. Must I think it's uh, um, I don't know if it's 1095, 1084. It's a it's a high carbon steel that he forged um, and it's got the same key lock as you can see, but instead of that vintage micarta. It's got really stunning desert iron wood. Interestingly enough, I think this one may have become my favorite of the five. There's something really special about, about this, this steel, how thick it is and, and how it feels 
So I just want to speak momentarily to the overall design here. Uh, there's enough there's enough belly on this knife that you could use it for skinning, although it's certainly not going to excel as uh, as something with a lot more belly. Um, there's enough flat here that it works very well for outdoors bush crafty tasks. Uh, so I think what what Joey Cordova has really done here is created a just wonderful all around everyday use knife. It's not too big, it's not too small. Um, I carry this on my hip. It's, it's small enough that at times I've carried it in my front pocket with the, uh, with the Bark River sheath as kind of an in-pocket sheath. I've carried it um, in, a, in a pack, in a, in a suitcase. Um, I take this knife to, with me to adventures in the forest, on the beach, in hotel rooms. I've, I've used this knife a lot and I just, I just love it. Here are some good size references. On top here we have the Bark River Bravo 1.25. Then we have the Bark River Gunny or Bravo Gunny. And then of course the Mora. Uh, I, I think this is the Companion. Um, so you can kind of get a, a size reference. I, I really like the Bark River Bravo. Uh, both, both these knives, really like it. Really like both of them. Uh, but I have to say, I grabbed this knife nine times out of ten. Uh, again, nothing negative about the Bravo. I just, I think that what we have here, what Joy Cordova has done, is created a knife that does really, really well at lots of things. Maybe it isn't the absolute best bushcrafting knife, or maybe it's not the absolute best hunting knife. Uh, you might be able to find a knife design that is a little bit better for one specific category, but as far as a knife that will excel at, that will do very well at all those categories, that's really what we, what we have here. When I was a student, there was one professor who spoke uh, much more plainly than many of the other professors at the university I attended. And that led at least me and some other students, I believe, to um, mistakenly think that the content of what he was saying was perhaps not as sophisticated. And in time, we realized that in this particular case, if anything, it was the opposite. This professor didn't use um, as much flowery language as many of the others, but he was effortlessly brilliant in his presentation. Sometimes the content that he was presenting was so profound, but the language was so plain, it almost took you a minute to realize what he was saying and how brilliant it was. Of course, once you realize this, that professor, um, his lectures and his books became um, all the more impressive and valuable to you, or at least to me. And I think that uh, it, it, it might be fair to say that Joey Cordova is to knife making what that professor was to history. Uh, once I keyed in on the effortless brilliance of this design, I began to look at other things by Joey Cordova. Let's talk very quickly about sheaths. When you buy the, the Bark River Joe Louis collaboration, you get a sheath that is very typical of Bark River. It's a it's a good quality sheath. It's uh, leather, sewn leather. It's a pouch style sheath. No complaints, it works great. When you buy a custom from Joey Cordova, it comes with a custom made sheath by a, a company or a group of leather workers called Two Drunken Celts. Um, because I have two customs, I have two of those sheaths. Both are good, probably very good. Um, one I think is, is a little bit better than the other one. Uh, this sheath is the first one I got. It's brown. It's quite good. It's, it's beautifully made. Uh, it's very sturdy. Um, just a couple just things to nitpick about. I did notice there's this line that goes all the way through here, almost to guide them. It just didn't seem super attractive. 
And it, this whole thing's off a little bit, the tooling in it. Furthermore, you can see this tip got ground a little strangely when they were finishing it. These are really small things though. Overall, I would say you definitely feel like you're getting a custom handmade product that's quite beautiful, uh, albeit with some aesthetic problems there on that one. The knife fits in quite well. Uh, they've put this leather strap, they've pushed this all the way up, this leather piece, so that um, when you press down on here, you're not pressing down the back of this, is not hitting your knife and marring your knife. I also think it makes for a tighter fit overall to have that piece of leather in there. Uh, it's good and tight, really great retention. Uh, very happy with the sheath. On the second one I got, it's basically perfect. It's, be it's really beautiful. You can see that, uh, that, that the tooling is exactly right on in, in terms of um, symmetry and following that, that um, the stitching for that welt there. Um, there's no line as I saw on the first one. Uh, so this second one is just, I'm just really, really pleased with it. I am, I'm happy with the sheaths, but just know that this is basically all my experience with custom fixed blade knives right here. So I, uh, I don't know what, what the norm is out there. I think that Joey Cordova's prices for his customs are, are very fair and you don't wait a tremendous amount of time. I waited a couple months. Um, it's a very good experience buying from him. Uh, but to get a to get a mid tech at at half that price, uh, it's just a wonderful knife. So either option is really great. The mid techs are wonderful. There is something really special about having a custom knife, and uh, so I do think it's worth the money. Especially the Joe Louis prices are are very reasonable. They're not out of this world. Uh, Joe Louis knives has a pretty great website, and they have a an active Facebook group that I've that I've been in and and, and commented in and. So if you're looking to buy a Joe Louis knife, uh, there are two primary retailers that carry them. One of them is Knives Ship Free. And right now, I believe that the Joey Cordova knives are actually in the closeout section which is good for anyone watching this who wants to buy one. Go to the Bark River section, and you can see here that there's the Essos, there's the Ranch Hand, and there's the Santos. I don't know what's available of, or left of the three, but here you can see the Knife Center, I believe is also a Bark River Bark River distributor. I don't have any connection to the Knife Center or to um, to Knife Ship Free, but here you can see there's the Ranch Hand. And there are some, some Santo. I believe that DLT trading is all out of the Bark River collaborations with Joe Louie, but this is a great opportunity to run over to their site and look at what they do have. So another product that Joe Louie puts out is this, this dirt, Joe Louie dirt, and I have no idea actually what it is, but it seems to be very popular. Uh, if you know what that is all about, please do comment in the section below. Here are a couple examples of Joe Louis custom knives that are available right now in Guilty Trading. These are fighting knives. They are, uh, this one's called the Blackthorn. There's another one called the Belmont, the Hellbat. They're all very similar knives, just slight differences in the blade shape. In addition to the fighters that we saw at DLT Trading, Joey Cordova makes a model called the Hellfire. 
and it is a model that is based on the Randall Model 1, and you can definitely see the similarities in it, but it's also got uh, a little Joe Louis flair to it. It's got his own kind of tweaks to it where he's made that model his own. If you, if you like that Model 1, and if you have found applications where it will work well, then you might want to look at, at Joe Louis Hellfire. Um, uh, for example, one thing that he's done is he has a, an in, integral uh, guard on it, uh, but that's just one of the most obvious things. There's other uh, small things he's done to make it his own. Uh, really wonderful knife. I haven't ever handled it, but just by its looks, it, it looks wonderful to me. So one reason I wanted to bring you to DLT Trading is here you can see a, a, a picture of the upcoming mid-tech that's about to be released called the Spitfire. Whereas the Santos was a, what I think would qualify as a mid-tech, um, or as they call it, semi-production. Whereas it was a collaboration between Joe Louis Knives and Bark River Knives, the Spitfire is just Joe Louis' own mid-tech. And I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe it's the first mid-tech that Joe Louis Knives has released, or is going to release. They're, they're being made, uh, you can go to DLT Trading and and pre-order one. You put down a $10 deposit, and uh, of course the knife will cost much more than that, but uh, that will get your name on one. You can also do a pre-order through Knife Ship Free. It's just that they don't have a an item that you can put in a shopping cart and check out with it. You just have to email them and let them know that you want to pre-order one. So here you can get an idea of what the knife is going to look like. Now Joey Cordova told me that he has, uh, similar to what he did with the Hellfire, basing it on the Randall Model 1, um, the Spitfire is his take on uh, the Bob Loveless shoot. And you can kind of see the similarities in its design. Uh, that, that line right here is going to be a fuller. Uh, you can see the integral guard, and I think the Bob Loveless influence is pretty obvious. I'm really excited for this knife. Obviously, I haven't held it in my hand. I don't know exactly what it's going to be like. I can't really endorse it. I'm just really excited for it. It's probably the production knife that I'm most excited about this year. Uh, here you can see handle options, handle materials that you can get. Um, although these are the options here with DLT Trading, it's also my understanding that those are the only options you can get even if you email and I ship free, it's the same. These are the options that Joe Louie has made available. You can get these liners. We'll give you a look here on the, on the specs. See blade steel is CPM 3V. You can see the cutting edge there is 6 inches. Handle length is 5 inches. And the thickness is going to be 0.156. My understanding is that this is a very small run of these. I, I have heard through the grapevine that DLT Trading only ordered, I think, 40 of these, less than 50 of them. And many of them have been already sold uh, through their pre-sale, uh, pre-order. Knife Ship Free, I... I have heard that they have ordered a small amount as well. I, I think it may be around 25 knives. I'm not sure. So there's not going to be a ton of these. Time will tell if when they drop on the sites, if if it's if they're going to disappear in minutes or if they're going to last days or weeks. We don't. I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. The handles on these are going to be removable, and that seems to be a, a trend that we're seeing more and more. We see this with uh, Phobos knives that were. Uh, collaboration with Bark River. We have seen this with dark timber knives. We've seen this with some ambush knives. And of course, we've seen this with SC knives. So I think what we're seeing is a trend of, of knives being made in higher end steels that allow people to change the, the scales on the knives. You can remove them to completely field clean the knife. And then you can change the scales. So if you want to have uh, a synthetic knife uh, material, handle material that's completely inert, like G10 or, or micarta, you can do that. If you then feel like one day you want to have wood scales on your knives, you can do that. We've seen with dark timber knives, for example, 
that people will, in many cases, fashion their own scales uh, to replace the ones that came on their knife. Uh, I think I, and I hope that we'll see that with these Spitfires. It should be a really fun knife to, uh, to get in on. I feel like I've had my fair share of, of knives that would fit into what we would refer to as competitive options for the Santos. Uh, and, I've, and I've had some knives that are, are really popular knives. We, we've seen uh, releases of knives that they, they hit the website and they're gone within, with, within minutes. Dan Tote Bulldogs, we've seen Vehement Grunts, we've seen Dark Timber 1911 Elites, and I have owned examples of, of all those knives, uh, and, and, I, and I certainly can't say anything bad about those knives or those makers. In fact, I, quite the opposite. I think they're all really wonderful. Uh, but the reality is that for me, I've actually purchased five of these, and the other, the aforementioned knives that I have had, I, I've actually passed them along to other people. Um, I keep coming back to this one. I have had examples of those knives, and this is the one that I carry when I am going out the door to take on some adventure. I, I just I love this knife, and one thing that I've noticed, I was talking to someone once, and I said, isn't it interesting that these other knives, and they're and they're wonderful knives. They fly off the shelf. It's a, it's a mad dash when when they're dropped on sites. They fall off. They fly off the shelves. And this knife sits in the closeout section of knives ship free for for months. Uh, and and this person replied back and they said, well, those knives are really visually engaging. And the Santos is really functionally engaging. And, and again, that's not to say that, that, that those other aforementioned knives aren't functional. They, they are. They're, they're wonderful knives. Um, and, and the handle of the 1911, which this is, this is the same handle, it's really great. It's really beautiful. And it's, it's, it's a joy to feel and to hold. Uh, I, I, I have very little critique for this handle and for the 1911 Elite. I think it's a wonderful knife. And yet this still stands and reigns supreme as my my all-time favorite go-to everyday carry type knife joe according to mike stewart of bark river joey cordova calls this his heavy edc and i think it's a it's a great name for it i'd like to wrap up this video by talking a little bit about uh, the way that I have, have presented uh, myself in this video and maybe contrast that against the, the title of this fledgling YouTube channel. Um, I think it would probably be fair for someone to watch this video and say, man, this guy is a Joe Louis fanboy. Uh, in some ways, I think it would be fair to say that. In other ways, I think it would not be fair to say that. Certainly, I have oohed and odd over the Santos, but uh, I think that I have done so based off of my experience with the knife, practical, everyday use experience. And I started out not thinking very highly of the knife before I got it in my hand. Um, I have sort of walked you through uh, the, the Joe Louis line up, told you where you could go to buy these knives, uh, told you a little bit about uh, Joe Louis Knives and, and, and their website. So it might seem like I'm really endorsing this, um, this company. Uh, but as I mentioned, I, I don't really know him that well, and I'm really basing my endorsement off of this one knife. And so I, I'm also not really coming across as endorsing the Spitfire so much as saying I'm supremely excited for it. Uh, there are other knives that Joe Louis makes that I would love to have. I just can't quite afford them right now. Um, I would love to have a Hellfire. Uh, so in some ways, yes, I may have come across as a bit of a fanboy, but in other ways, in other ways, no. I named my channel 
I, I can't even really call it a channel. It's more of like an account, right? I don't have any followers. I don't have any videos up, but I named the account the Stinky Goat. And of course, or I hope it's uh, cleared some people that this is in reference to a, a famous quote by Marcus Aurelius uh, talking about uh, candor and honesty. And I am not being compensated in any way by Joe Louis Knives or by DLT Trading or Knife Ship Free. Just wanted to, to share my excitement about this, this uh, knife that I think is underappreciated and to point people towards the Spitfire, which is something that I'm really excited about. And time will tell if it's, uh, if it's a wonderful knife or not.